Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. I often hear Christians lamenting about how bad things have gotten in our world. And then I hear those in the world talk about how bad things are in the church. And I have to admit, sometimes I see a lot of failure in both the world and the church. There's just a lot of trouble all around. And sometimes the trouble makes us wonder how God will act. What will he do? Is there any hope? Samuel, who we've been studying the last couple of days, grew up in such a hopeless time. As we've considered his life, we've seen that he had a faithful mother, but the culture around him was pretty messed up. Things were so bad that Eli's sons, who were priests and were serving in the temple, were doing all kinds of evil things. One thing that they would do is take the best part of people's offering for themselves. Now, the best part of a sacrifice was supposed to be fully dedicated to the Lord. But these priests were taking the best part for themselves and giving the leftovers to God. We can read about their other evil actions when their father confronts them. The, the confrontation is found in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 2, verse 22. Now Eli was very old, and he kept hearing all that his sons were doing to Israel and how they lay with the women who were serving at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And he said to them, why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all these people. No, my sons, it is no good report that I hear the people of the Lord spreading abroad. If someone sins against a man, God will mediate for him. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can intercede for him? But they would not listen to the voice of their father, for it was the will of the Lord to put them to death. Now, this is a pretty negative environment. Remember, Samuel's growing up here in the tabernacle, starting at about the age of three or four. The adults who should have been his role models were actually showing him exactly what he should not do. Stealing the offerings and sleeping with the women who served in the temple had earned Eli and his sons God's rejection. Eli's inability to correct them and to rein in their misconduct led the Lord to reject Eli and his entire family. And in the midst of all this sin, we read this about Samuel. It's in verse 26. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and also with man. Now you can imagine with so much sin going on in the tabernacle that God wasn't revealing himself very often. God had been rejected by the religious leaders and so he had rejected them. But God was going to do something different with Samuel. Chapter three records how God called Samuel to be his messenger. While Samuel slept, God called his name, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. So he got up to see what Eli wanted. But Eli hadn't called Samuel. So he told Samuel to go back to bed. The same thing happened three times. God called to Samuel. Samuel thought it was Eli. And Eli said, go back to bed. But on that third time, Eli realized that it was God calling to Samuel. So this time, Eli told Samuel to listen to what the Lord had to say. Let's read it. It's in Samuel, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. 
Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So in the morning, Eli wanted to know what God had said to Samuel. Samuel, of course, was scared to share this message because it promised the destruction of Eli's family. But Eli pressed him. Tell me what, he said, what God said. So Samuel shared that Eli and his sons had been rejected by God. And Eli simply accepted the message. Their end had been determined. Chapter 3 of Samuel ends by explaining that Samuel continued to grow and God revealed his word to Israel through Samuel. When things were looking bleak in Israel, God was still working. God had a plan. He was working out. He wasn't going to let the rebellion of the priests continue. He was going to drive out the evil and reestablish his message and his presence with his people. God was going to do this through Samuel. Now, I don't know what you're feeling today, but if you're feeling like things are bad or just getting worse, remember Samuel. Remember that God is always working and he has a plan to redeem in the midst of the challenge that you see all around you. I hope that this gives you a better day, no matter what comes your way.